The next algorithm that I want to explain is probabilistic LSA. So we already know about the latent semantic analysis with the singular value decomposition. There is another approach, we call it the probability LSA. And what is probability LSA? <coughs> the PLSA, or the probability LSA, is the probabilistic model that explains the creation of documents. So basically, it is using the distribution. So we want to know the categorical distribution. The categorical distribution means the term distribution or the keywords distribution. And it is also available for the document distribution. So in the PLS model, there will be two kind of distribution. The first is document topic distribution. It means documents have its word distribution over the topics. So we want to know the document with the respective topic. So what is the distribution? And there is another distribution, topic word distribution. So topic word distribution means the topic have its word distribution over all words. So we have the topic and the topic we want to know the distribution with regard to the words or sometimes we call it terms. So we will have three kind of uh, variable. First, we will have T which refers to document. Z refers to topic and W refers to word. In this PLSA, uh, the algorithm applies the EM algorithm. EM algorithm is the expectation maximization. So there will be two steps. The first is the E step. It is to find the expected value. And the M step, it is to find the maximum value. So the E step, it means that we will check the posterior probability of the latent variables. So latent variables, as I mentioned to you, latent means something hidden, something we need to discover on some values after we do the linear algebra or after we do some calculation with the matrix decomposition and etc. So the latent variables, something hidden, uh, it is related to the topic yeah, or it is related to the concepts. So in this case, because it is about topic modeling, we want to find the topic. And the M step means we want to look at the parameter estimation. So usually, yeah, we want to find the maximum values. So we want to maximize after sometimes there is no big changes on the value. So this is the probability. So we have Z. Z is the topic. D, as I mentioned to you before, D is the document. And W is the word. So I want to know what is the probability, what is the probability of that topic given that I know that is the document or in a particular document and in a particular word. So this is the formula. Okay, you don't need to worry about this one. We want to calculate the probability of Z. So what is the probability of the topics 
multiplied by the probability of the document given a topic and the probability of a word given a topic divided by the summation summation of all the topics so z let's say if we have two topics then we want to know for the topic one so the topic one will be calculated divided by the summation it means let's say if i have two topics so the summation will be the probability of the topic one plus the probability of the topic two Or sometimes we can just equally calculate like this one the probability of topic z given the document multiplied by the probability of what given topics so z given d means the document topic distribution which is the probability of topic z in the document d and the w Z means the topic word distribution, the probability of word W in the topic Z. Maybe for the easy understanding, we can take a look on the example. Oh, oh sorry. Before the example, I would like to explain that there will be two steps that we take a look. First, the E step or the expectation step. In the expectation step, we will initialize the probabilities. The probabilities means the document topic distribution and the word topic distribution. So we will assign two random values. Usually, for simplicity, we just make it equal for two topics. So 0.5. 0.5. So for the topic one, given the document D, we just put down 0.5. For the topic two, document D, we put 0.5. This is for the document topic distribution. For the topic word distribution, we also have the same idea. We will just assign randomly, similar to the P W Z. We assume all words are equally for each topic initial. So in the initial set, yeah, usually we just make any numbers or just initial numbers. So in this case, for example, the basketball in the topic one, let's say just give a value zero point five. For basketball in the topic two, let's say we give a value zero point five, and so on. After the expectation step, we go to the maximization step. So we will do the calculation. So the calculation it means we will check the probability of a topic given by the document and the word. So after we have the posterior probabilities, we will update the topic distribution first we need to update the pw given z pw given a topic so it is the calculation or the count and n means the count so how many times the document one of particular word appears and it is multiplied with the probability of the topic given by the document D and the document uh, the word W and then we will do all the summation okay, so N D W means the number of word in the document so by giving this formula it means we will do the normalization so this is yeah by using this formula we want to normalize it and after the normalization we will calculate for every words and for every topic so let's say we have this 
uh, document the matrix. We have the document one. I love pet basketball, and then after you do the pre-process, let's say you do the stop words removal, you lemmatize, and etc. We have love basketball, and then basketball is green, so I have basketball in green. The election will be helped, so I use election and help, and so on. Okay. So this is the document the matrix. In the document one, we have love. We have basketball, the other is June. So in document two, we have love, zero, basketball, red, and the other is June, okay, and so on. So let's assume we have two topics. So the two topics mentioned that we have Z1 and Z2. And at the first, we will randomly initialize the probabilities. So this random uh, initialization happens in the topics over word and also documents over the topics. So you can see like this one. So let's say I want to say yeah, the easiest one is this one. The probability of love given that it is in the topic one it is 0 0.2 so the easy way to look at the numbers is in this table so the probability of the word love given the topic one okay we assign a value 0 0.3 the probability of the word love given the topic z2 or topic two so we have zero point. So this is assigned randomly. So this initialization randomly assigned and also with the document. So the document one and the document uh, the topic uh, the topic one and the topic two. And for this one, sometimes we can just apply with numbers like. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, equally like this one, or yeah, sometimes we can assign randomly a value like this one. So the expectation step means we want to compute the posterior probability. The posterior probability means I want to know the probability of a topic given that the D and W. So the probability of a topic given a document and word using the current estimates of P probability of that word in the particular topic and the probability of the topic in the document. So the document word pair we can calculate using this Bayesian rule. So we have the topic Z, given the topic Z, given by the document and word. So we can use this formula, the probability of the word given a topic and multiply by the probability of the topic given a document. And we will do for all the topics. So Z means a collection of the topics. So if the topics there are two, then yeah, we will do for all the topics, which is two topics. So let's see with example. <clears throat> um, I want to know the word basketball. So I want to know the word best of all in the document one, and I want to know the probability that given this document one and the word best of all, I want to know the probability in the topic one or Z one. So given by this value, uh, you can take a look with the formula. So we can change this is the probability of the best of all given the topic one.
So I want to know the topic one. Given uh, the probability of basket ball given the topic one. So it is 0 0.4. Multiply by the probability of the topic one given the document one. The probability of the topic one given document one. So it is 0 0.5. So we can calculate 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.5. It is divided by the number of basketball in the topic 1 and the basketball in the topic 2. Because I want to know about the basketball and I want to look at all the topics. Then zero point four multiply by zero point five. This is for only the topic one, and yeah, I have this zero point four multiply by zero point five plus zero point three multiply zero point five. So what is it? This is the probability of the word basketball in the topic two. The probability of the basketball in the topic two multiply by the probability of the topic two given document. Topic two given document one. So it is zero point five. Then we can get the value is zero point five seven. What about the value? the probability of Z2 given the document 1 and the best level. So we know that the denominator is 0 0.5 plus 0. Point, uh, 0 0.5 multiplied 0 0.5 plus 0 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.5. Then we know this is for the Z1, this is for the topic 1 and this is for the topic 2 and we want to know the probability z1 so this can be just the opposite one this is the z2 divided by z1 plus z2 okay. so the basketball given in the topic z2 the basketball given the topic z2 is 0 0.3 multiply by the probability of the topic 2 in the document 1. This is 0 0.5. So 0 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.5 divided by the overall of the word basketball in the document 1 for the topic 2. So we will get this one. Okay. You can get the value for the word basketball in document one for the topic one. And you can get the basketball in the document one for the topic two. So you can use all the words. So we can also do the probability of Z1 document one for the word love. We can also do the probability of Z1 for document one for the word grade. And so so we will do all the probabilities and also we will do with the probability of set one given the document two basketball so we will do for all documents we will do for all words and we will do for all the topics so after we have the posterior probabilities okay, after we have the posterior properties, we will calculate and we will update the topic distribution. What is the topic distribution? The topic distribution is the probability of a word given that particular topic. So this, the, the idea is, we just want to know the word, okay? How many word appears in that particular topics. 
correct NPW. So we already know NPW means the count. How many times the word appears in the particular document? And we will multiply it with the probability of topic given by the document and the word. So let's say, oh, I don't have the explanation. So this is for the probability of basketball given the set one. Oh, this one, okay. The probability of basketball given that it is in the topic one. How can we calculate this one? So we will calculate for all the numbers of words that appears of basketball in all documents so let's see basketball how many times it appears basketball appears in the document one for one time basketball appears in the document two one time basketball appears in the document four one time so we will do and it is the count multiplied by the probability of z z is topic one given the word basketball so the word basketball we got the value from this probability of the topic one on the document one with the word basketball so we have the value 0 0.57 And we will do just multiplication and do the summation for all the documents. In the document one, we have one time of the word basketball. We will multiply with the probability. We will multiply the probability plus one. In the document two, multiply with the probability plus one. This is from the document four. Multiply with the probability. Then we will get the summation is 1.7. And we will do again with the normalization divided by all the words and all documents. So the total count is 4.41. The result is 0 0.387 for this basketball and that one. So we will check how can we calculate this one. We do similar calculation for all document words pair. So we will do all the things with the basketball document one, basketball document two, uh, basketball document three, and so on. And we can do with the total count. So what is total count? What is total count here? It is obtained from the expected value of each word in document. So what is the expected values? So this is the expected values. Uh, we have this document term matrix okay so in the document one the word love that is one in document one the word basketball that is one and so on so we let's let's say we just uh, make assumption with the profit numbers okay we just use the profit number uh, let's let's say this is the basketball. Okay, in the basketball we have zero point fifty seven, and say this is also zero point fifty seven. This is also zero point fifty seven. This is zero point six. Yeah, let's make assumption that the number already available. Okay, so actually this is the one that you need to calculate. How to calculate this one? Zero point fifty seven. So you already know this one from 
is the Z1 given D1 plus the four. We can get 0 0.57. So let's say after we do the calculation, we got all this number. So the love is available in the document one. But it does not appear in other document. Then we can have the expected count of the word love in the document one for a particular. So let's say this one is 0 0.6. Yeah. Then the expected count is 1 plus 0. Oh, sorry. This is. This is multiplied, okay? 1 multiplied 0 0.2. For the basketball, we have 3. 1, 2, 3. So it means this is the probability of the Z1 given the document 1, word 2. Word 2 is basketball in the document 1. Basketball in the document 2. Basketball in the document 4. In the document two, in the document four, and let's say we have this count. So the expected count is we have one multiplied by zero point fifty seven. We have one we have multiplied by zero point fifty seven, and we have one multiplied by zero point eight seven. Again, yeah, we have all those values. Yeah, let's say we got this value zero point four. We have this value zero point three and zero point five. So uh, if there is one value, of course, we can just calculate only one. If there are two values, we will calculate two. If there are one values, we have one values. Okay, after we have those, okay, we just multiply the number. So because it is one, then one multiply 0 0.4, one multiply 0 0.3, one multiply 0 0.35, one multiply this one, this one, and then we got the value like this. The total count for the Z1 for the topic 1. So we just do the summation 0 0.6 plus 0 0.57 plus 0 0.57 plus 0 0.57 plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.35 plus 0 0.4 0 0.45 0 0.2. So the result is 4.41. And this is the total count that we use to look at the probabilities of the basketball given that it is uh, the topic one. Okay. So the probability is 0 0.387. 4.41 is the total expected count. So after we have this one, what is the next step? So the next step is yeah, we will refine. We will refine the PWZ and PZT. This is the word given a topic and the topic given a document. So we will do again the E step and the M step until convergence. Okay, the word convergence. So convergence means the algorithm stops making significant changes to the model parameters. So if the number is changing just very small or yeah, it doesn't make any significant changes to the model parameter, then it stops. Or we can say something like this. The Word topic distribution and the topic document distribution stabilize across iteration. So stabilize means the changes is very, very small. Or we can look at the word like this one. The change in log likelihood. The likelihood of the observed data document networks given the current model parameters should stop increasing or change very little between iteration. So if the changes is very small, we stop. Or the changes in the model parameters. So the value of the WZ and the probability of ZT is stabilized and stop fluctuating significantly after its iteration. If the changes is small, we can stop. 
or we call this is convergence. And its iteration, okay, we have the topic word and document topic distribution, and there will be soft assignment from the previous iteration. Soft assignment means we have like the probability. So you can see that the number, the probability is a value, maybe 0 0.55 5, and 0 0.345, something like this one. Okay. So this assignment will not be a uh, hard. Hard means binary. So you will not see it is zero and one. It always be in the number with the probability. So that's the meaning. The assignment of each word in document to a topic is not hard binary decision, is not one zero, but rather the probabilistic one. And what may not definitely belong to a single topic. So if it is a hard assignment, then there will be zero or one, but the word partially belongs to multiple topics. So for example, if the word basketball in the document, it might be assigned 0 0.57. And uh, jet, yeah, jet one is 0 0.57 and jet two is 0 0.43. It means that the basketball is 57%. This is percent. Okay, so it means that this 50% likely to belong to topic one and 40% likely to belong to topic two. Okay. So we will do uh, this kind of iteration more and more to get the Okay, so um, the next is about the LDA. I need more time to discuss the LDA. Let's discuss the algorithm in detail on Tuesday. But before we finish, then let's go to the Google Collab first. Uh, I put all the things in the same code. Mm, I put the PLSA and the uh, LDA in the same code. For the LDA, you can use the library, Clayton Theory Slab Allocation. So it's not difficult to use this LDA. But for the PLSA, I just refer to one side, and this is the step by step. So the the code applies the step by step that I explained in the class. First, we do the random initialization. So random, we use the random function. We put the random values for each of the document and the topic. So we have the topic Z and D. And then we have the W Z. So it is the word in the particular topic. So we have the E step. The e step means we calculate the probability of a topic given the document and the meaning. So we have this book. And the m step, we want to update the probability of set given the document and the probability of word given the topic. So pzp and pwz. So this is an iteration. Okay. So you can determine how many iteration that you want to generate. So let's say yeah, if I put only 10 iteration, then yeah, it will just run for 10 times. But you can also change 
is criteria. For example, yeah, there is another kind of uh, criteria because this is a function. Okay, we we can define the maximum iteration, so you can make another parameter. For example, after the changes is very small, so we can also create that one. So is it combines with the LDA? Oh, wait. oh okay. So this is the PLSA. I you can see this is the PLS result. Okay, so this is the document the matrix at the original at the first step, and then we can get the PLS day after we do the ten iteration. And this is the topic with the matrix that you can see if the topic one belongs to basketball. This is the probability. The topic two belong to basketball. This is the probability. So we can say that topic one, uh, the basketball is high, mostly highly associated with topic one because the value is higher. So that's how we can interpret this on the result. And yeah, the document one, uh, the document zero, it more in the topic two. Because in the topic one, yeah, the value is very small. This topic one, it belongs to more to topic two. This belongs to topic two, this belongs to topic two. Okay, most of them belong to topic two. Maybe because the iteration is very small, so all of them belong to one topic. Okay, so that's about the PLSA. For the LDA, actually, you can just use the library like this one, like what we uh, look at the other algorithm. Let's say the NMF and also the LSA. So you can just use the number of components that you want to look at in means the number of topics that you want to search. So this is the result. Using the LDA, we have the topic one and the topic two. So this is again we have the topic two terms. And this is the topic distribution. Anyway, um, all those things on the topic modeling it always about how we know that the document or the terms apply to the particular topics. Okay, then I will stop here. I will continue the explanation of LDA on Tuesday. So we can have more time to discuss in details.